Hello, this is Brenda Wengard Haynes, and this is Chem 207, and this is Unit 3. Unit 3 is Calculations and the Chemical Equation. This is where the class will, the intention is for this unit to be flipped in its entirety. And there will be a fair amount of work that you'll need to do outside of the classroom, including watching flipped videos that take the class notes that we've been doing in the classroom and puts them in a flipped format. You should have the notes that say Unit 3 Flip Notes 2018 blank in front of you, and you'll probably need to stop the video periodically so that you can work on problems. Nonetheless, you're going to need some uh, ancillaries, such as your solubility chart, your activity series, your periodic table, and a calculator. Now, thus far, we've looked at how to put compounds together. We've looked at ionic and non-ionic, and we've looked at how to figure out how to do that. For ionic, you need to predict charge. Non-ionic, we looked at Lewis structures, and we figured out how to do that through an entire lab sheet, or you should have done something like that. And we looked at how to name them. Now, what we want to do is we want to put those into the chemical reaction, okay? And then once we have a chemical reaction, then we're going to want a calculation, okay? Now, in your book, depending on which one you have, these are the chapters. Regardless of what book you have, we're going to come back to redox later on, okay? So this is where it really gets very cumulative, Okay, so you absolutely have to practice and you must keep up. All right, now on basic reactions, you need to refer to your textbooks and some videos that I provided for you on the Blackboard shell regarding the basic tenets of reactions. What are the reactants? What are the products? And the fact that they have to be balanced. This should absolutely not be new. If you need to, go ahead and pause to go and do that. Now a bit of a recap. If you have a general equation like this, your reactants are going to be on the left hand side, your products are going to be on the right hand side, your little a, your little b, your little c, your little d are what we call stoichiometric coefficients. They tell you how many. So when we were making ionic compounds and I told you to put the number in front, for example, Mg2 plus plus 2Cl minus, and that the number in front told you how many, this is analogous. This will tell you how many A's, how many B's, how many C's, how many D's. The double arrow tells you that it will go forward, and so we can say forward means yield, or produces, or forms, or something like that. The double arrow means it's reversible, and we will come back to that later. Heat. Heat can be put in, heat can be generated, or heat can be put above the arrow, which is the same as seeing, saying that heat goes in. The triangle means heat which is usually expressed in either kcals per mole or kilojoules per mole. And we will come back to that in Unit 5. Now, the reason you have to balance with stoichiometric coefficients and not subscripts, if you have MgCl2, that is the valid ionic formula. So MgCl2, for example says you have one magnesium and two chlorines that are put into that. So you can't just change the subscript and write 2MgCl, for example, because you need the two in front to balance, because this is no longer valid. And this is why we spent all this time in Unit 2 making valid, valid, molecules or compounds. Once you do that, you cannot change them. You have to change the numbers in front to balance. Okay, so again, top of page two. This is why we spent so much time making valid 
compounds. Once you make a valid compounds, you cannot change them. Again, go to these videos. Very, very little time will be spent in your lecture notes. Go to your textbook and find problems. I put those on Blackboard for you. Again, pause the video and do this before going on. Okay, so for the sake of the flipped notes, what we'll do is we'll pick up on types of reactions and predicting products. Some of this is new for some of you, some of it is not. Okay, so there are different types that we'll talk about. Combination, decomposition, single replacement, and double replacement, which we just call replacement or displacement. Okay, now again, you'll need to properly predict ionic products before going forward. Go back to Unit 2 to practice if you need to. Okay, so combination will take an A and a B and combine it into a valid C. So for example, Mg plus O2 will combine to MgO. You cannot just combine them like this. And the reason for that is that magnesium forms a plus 2 and oxygen forms a minus 2. So this is not valid, this is. Now when you look at this, you will see that this is not balanced stoichiometrically. One magnesium in, one magnesium out. Two oxygens in, one oxygen out. So you have to balance this with the stoichiometric coefficient by putting a 2 in front. That now has robbed Peter to pay Paul, so to speak, and you have two oxygens in and two oxygens out, but you now have two magnesiums in and one magnesium out. So we'll need to put a stoichiometric coefficient of 2 on the magnesium in order for that to balance. Now for the sake of assessment, I always tell students to add up the stoichiometric coefficients, so we'll go ahead and start with that. 2 plus 1 plus 2, because remember this has to be a 1, so these will add up to 5. Okay? Hydrogen, diatomic. Oxygen, diatomic. Yields H2O. You can't just take H2 plus O2 and combine them into H2O2. This is water. This is not. This is hydrogen peroxide, which is used as a disinfectant. This is a combination reaction, but not the one you want. You need the valid form of hydrogen, the valid form of oxygen. And here is your equation. Two hydrogens in, two hydrogens out. Two oxygens in, one oxygen out. Two, two. Sum of the stoichiometric coefficients, 2 plus 1 plus 2 equals 5. Calcium combines with nitrogen, which is also diatomic, to form calcium nitride. Well, you have to make a valid calcium nitride. Ca plus 2 and 3 minus. If you don't remember how to do that, again, you need to go to your periodic table. 2 and 3 always make 6, so our valid formula is Ca3N2. Ca3N2. 1 calcium in, 3 calciums out, so we need a stoichiometric coefficient of 3. 2 nitrogens here, 2 nitrogens there, so now we're balanced. The sum will be 3 plus 1 plus 1, 3, 1, and 1 equals 5. The next segment will begin with decomposition.